On the semi-arid lands of prehistoric Mongolia, silence is a rarity, and today it is anything but. For through the dry forest comes the panic chorus of a dinosaur stampede. The earth shakes as dozens of dinosaurs of all shapes, sizes, and species run for their lives. From the large, heavy hadrosaurs to thin but fleet ornithopods, and even a primitive ceratopsian. They were all crashing through the undergrowth in a panic. Behind them all came the ones who caused the carnage. A pack of Achilla beta. Large feathered dromaeosaurs over five meters long and armed with deadly claws and massive sickle-like talons on their feet. These are not lightly built sprinters. They are bulky and heavily muscled. And so while they cannot pursue their prey for long, anything they catch rarely gets away. The predators closed in on the mass of fleeing herbivores, but this was no well-organized plan of attack, nor was it a team honed by years of working together. It was more like a vicious gang sprinting in wild abandon, striking at the first thing they could sink their claws into, and hoping one or more of their packmates would bother to help. The herbivores seemed to avoid a space in front of them, for they were approaching a pair of Talararos, heavily armoured ankylosaurs, who were already standing steadfast, ready to batter the predators if any tried to get it close. These were not the targets, however, and the pack moved to sidestep them, except for one Achillobator, who continued straight for them. Right before he was about to get smashed by the pair of tail clubs, he jumped onto one of the armoured herbivores' back, and then used it like a springboard to launch himself up into the air. He was propelled 12 metres forward, right onto the back of a Gallimimus. The ostrich-like dinosaur buckled under the carnivore's weight, and both of them tumbled across the ground. But the Archilobator held on, and when they both came to a stop, he dug his teeth into the long neck of the doomed prey. The rest of the pack didn't stop, even as one of their number snatched up a small Gracilla Steratops in its jaws and begun to feed. The mixed herd was exiting the forest and continuing to run, the lead Achillobator tried to leap onto the back of one of the hadrosaurs, but couldn't hold on, sliding off its side, leaving deep claw wounds. It was then that an unexpected and unusual dinosaur entered the fray. The herd was once again moving around to avoid a stationary species, but this one stood tall above the rest. Segnosaurus a Therizinosaur covered in a mat of thick feathers that stood angrily with its long neck held rigid and bearing its enormous claws in a display of aggression. It was larger and far heavier than the approaching Achillobators, but this was no issue. Large prey was their specialty. It was the serrated claws on its hands that though usually used to pull down leaves to feed on, could easily puncture and slash the flesh of attackers. For this reason, the odd-looking dinosaur was not a usual target for the pack, but they were so pumped up on adrenaline and the thrill of the hunt that seeing a creature standing still amongst a mass of stampeding bodies was too much of a lure. The first Achillobator leapt straight at the tall Segnosaurus, which promptly caught the attacker mid-flight, and then using its momentum hurled it sideways through the air. Before the stunned Achillobator hit the ground, a second one leapt on the Segnosaur's back, his finger claws cutting through feathers and flesh alike. Once he had a grip, he kicked his sickle-like claw deep into the giant's back, making it flinch in pain before retracting the claw and driving it into another area, trying to inflict as much damage as possible, bleeding it rather than going for a quick kill. The long-necked herbivore then did something unexpected. It fell on its side and then rolled onto its back, the Achillobator on top of it had no time to react before it was flattened under 1.3 tons of feathers and muscle. The Segnosaurus completed the roll. The Predator was off his back. Some of its bones were broken or fractured, but still alive. Then a third Achillobator came out of nowhere and tackled the Segnosaurus's head and neck, wrapping its forelimbs and jaws around the herbivore's neck, sinking the claws and teeth into it while holding it to the ground. The victim tried to stand, but couldn't lift its head or shoulders off the ground with the Achillobator grappling it, and now, with multiple deep wounds, the blood loss was starting to weaken him. 
Now the first Echilobator was back in the fight, having recovered from being tossed to the ground, and it bit into the Segnosaur's back leg, ripping away a chunk of flesh. The herbivore let out a few gargled breaths. If it was lucky, it would die before it realised it was being eaten alive. An hour later, the pack of five had gathered around the Segnosaur's carcass. They had all fed well, and only one of them had sustained injuries and with enough time he could recover to full health. Three kills for one injured was a good day, and the Therizinosaur body alone would keep them full for many days. In the forest of the Gallimimus carcass, a Tyrannosaur feeds on the remains. But this is no giant apex predator. In fact, she is not much larger than the Achillobators. In this land, she is the scavenger, the one who lingers in the shadows. In this land, the Achillobators are the top predators. Hello everyone and welcome back to the show. Today we will be breaking down one of the largest dromaeosaurs ever to have lived. Achillobator. Achillobator, named after the Greek hero Achilles, lived between 96 and 89 million years ago in what is now Mongolia. For a dromaeosaur, it was very large, measuring up to 6 meters in length, 2 meters tall, and weighing around 250 kilograms. Unlike its close relatives, Achillobator was stockier and heavily built, with shorter, more robust hind limbs. This leads to the hypothesis that it did not pursue fast prey, but went after large-sized animals. Though it might not have been an incredibly fast sprinter, it had massive thigh muscles that would have allowed it to make incredible jumps. Now, I'm sure some of you remember the scene in Jurassic Park where Dr. Grant scares a kid with a raptor claw and finishes off saying that they would eat you while you were still alive. This is actually a legitimate hypothesis. A killer beta would have likely leapt onto its prey's back and pulled them down using its weight, sinking the large claw on the second toe into the animal perhaps finishing it off with its jaws, seeking to kill its prey through blood loss and organ failure, while potentially eating the live animal, as previously mentioned. Its head was also more stocky and robust than other dromaeosaurs, an adaptation for hunting large prey, as opposed to snatching small, fast-moving animals. Only the holotype specimen has been found, so there is no evidence it would hunted in packs. There is also no direct evidence of feathers, but some closely related species are known to have had them, so it's likely Achillobator did as well. Not many dromaeosaurs became large predators. In fact, most remain small, lightweight carnivores. Achillobator is one of the few that became massive and left behind its lean origins to become a heavy and powerful hunter that was still quite fast and unlike other families of theropods, could leap incredibly well. This works so well, in fact, that Achillobata is believed to be the top predator of its region. It shared its environment with dinosaurs such as Talaros, Gallimimus, Gacalaceratops, Segnosaurus, Golbihadros, and Aircectu. So, Achillobata, a species I definitely wouldn't want to run into, combining size, speed, power, and deadly weapons to create a predator that dominated the food chain. Now please try to remember that this is just a small glimpse into the animal. There is plenty more to learn about it. I'm just seeking to shed some light on lesser known species, and that goes for all the species that I do videos on. So what do you think of Achillobator? Do you believe the theory about it eating its prey while they're still alive? It's certainly a vicious image. What lesser known dinosaur would you like me to cover in a future episode? Until then, thank you for watching.